Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. This one's a bit of a doozy, but this is the problem we're gonna be doing today. So we have a problem here that explains quite a bit. Uh, this is a good example of an optimization problem, but it is a little bit different than a lot of the problems I've done this week. So basically we have uh, the manager of a 100 unit apartment complex knows from experience that all units will be occupied if the rent is $800 per month. A market survey suggests that on average, one additional unit will remain vacant for each $10 increase in rent. What rent should the manager charge to maximize revenue? So before getting into this problem, what I want to point out is some useful kind of equations that will come into play when you're doing any problem that has anything to do with uh, revenue, or I guess not some equations, just one equation in particular, which is the equation for revenue itself. So in general, we know revenue equals price times quantity, where price is basically the price that you're selling your product or service or whatever for, and quantity is obviously the amount of that product that you're selling. So in this case, our revenue, or I guess our price and our quantity, our price is going to be the rent for each apartment and the quantity is the number of apartment rooms that are being occupied. So for each room that's occupied, we're going to be receiving that rent and basically the product of those two things, the price times the quantity is going to give us our total revenue from this entire apartment complex. So since we are trying to maximize our revenue in this problem, the problem told us, or the problem asked us, I should say, what rent should the manager charge to maximize revenue? So we're trying to maximize revenue. So if we want to maximize revenue, what we should do is come up with an equation for the revenue. So we're going to come up with an equation. Let's say this is a function of X, but let's think for a second what X actually represents. We are really only given information in this problem about how the occupancy numbers will be impacted by $10 increases in rent. So what that kind of suggests is it would probably be more helpful to call our input of this function or our x value to represent the number of ten dollar increases we're going to apply to the rent so let's remember that x is the number of ten dollar increases so Based on that, let's first, instead of coming straight to our revenue equation, let's think about price and quantity in terms of X. So first of all, the price. The rent of each apartment is starting at $800 per month, right? So let's just say it's starting at 800. Now, for each $10 increase we apply to our rent, that basically means that the price or the rent is going to go up by ten dollars right so our price will increase by ten times the number of ten dollar increases we apply if we apply one ten dollar increase that means we're raising the price by ten dollars imagine plugging in x one for x that'll give us one times ten is ten plus eight hundred our rent would now be eight hundred ten if we apply two ten dollar increases that's twenty dollars three increases would be thirty dollars and so on so that'll be our equation in terms of x for the price of each apartment. Now let's think about the quantity. We know that when our price is 800, so basically kind of our starting point, when we haven't applied any $10 increases, we have all 100 apartments being occupied. Now what the problem tells us is one, one additional unit will be vacant for each $10 increase we apply to the price. So each time we increase our price by $10 or increase X by one, we're going to lose one more room out of our occupancy, right? One more room will be vacant each time we increase our price by $10. So the total number of rooms that are filled is going to be 100 rooms minus however many $10 increases we've applied. So these are our equations for price and quantity in terms of X now. So now to get our revenue equation, we can just do our price equation times our quantity equation, and that'll leave us with revenue. So doing that will just give us 800 plus 10x times 100 minus x, right? Price times quantity will give us our revenue. 
So now we have our revenue equation. So our, remember, our goal here is to maximize revenue. So to maximize this equation, we're going to need to find the critical number or critical numbers and figure out where the maximum is. So before doing that, let's uh, just kind of simplify this revenue equation and then we can go from there. So basically to simplify this, we're just gonna FOIL. So we're gonna do the first times the first, the outer ones multiplied, the inner ones multiplied, and then the last. So doing 800 times 100, gives us 80,000. 800 times negative X would be minus 800 X. And then 10 X times 100 would be plus 1000 X. So 1000 X minus 800 X just leaves us with plus 200 X. And then 10 X times negative X would leave us with negative 10 X squared. So thinking about what this equation would look like real quick before we continue on to find our critical numbers, we would have a parabola here, right? This equation would just be a parabola. And since our x squared term is has a negative coefficient, that tells us that our parabola would be downward facing, right? It would look something like this. So we know that this a parabola only has one critical number and that critical number is going to be a maximum. So if we find our critical number of this equation, we can pretty much assume that it's going to be a maximum. We could do some actual tests to con confirm that, um, but I'm going to skip it for simplicity here. Um, but if you want to, you know, kind of confirm that with those actual tests, you could definitely go, go about doing that, like the first derivative test, for example. To find the critical number, all we have to do is take the derivative of this and set it equal to zero. So first we'll find the derivative. The derivative of a constant is zero, so this is just going to go away. The derivative of 200x is 200, and the derivative of negative 10x squared would just be power rule, would be negative 20x. Now we'll set our derivative equal to zero. We can add 20x to both sides, and then divide both sides by 20, leaving us with x equals 10. So we're not quite done yet. There's more to do because x is not our answer. Remember, X represents the number of $10 increases we're applying to the rent of each apartment. But what the question asked us is, what should the manager charge for the rent? So what we need to do is think back to our price equation that we had, which was price equals 800 plus 10 X. And we know that we want to figure out our price based on X being 10. Because when X is 10, that's when our revenue is maximized. So if we take 10 and plug it in here, we're gonna get 800 plus 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100, so 800 plus 100 is 900. So our manager should charge $900 per month for rent to maximize the revenue that we get from this entire apartment complex. 